So, Jonathan from The Next Layer on YouTube has given me some scan data of himself and he's asked me if I can create something interesting with it. This video is a recording of that sculpting process. Okay, so to start with, we um, take the initial mesh and just start cutting it up into pieces. So you notice I'm separating the head uh, from the body, kind of lining it up so that it's straight, because uh, the problem you tend to have when with a lot of these imports is that they are at weird angles, weird sizes, and just ugh, it, all kind of things that can be wrong with them. So it, at least the first 20 minutes or so is it just taking the mesh that you've been given and prepping it to the point where you can actually start sculpting it. So you, you see here, I'm starting to kind of like clean up the trousers, make it into something that's workable, that kind of thing. So a lot of this is just about refining the mesh, uh, cleaning it up, the, that kind of thing. So you can see I'm starting to like inflate parts of the collar to kind of fix where the, the mesh is um, kind of corrupted. It's gone all like, like crinkly. Um, Dynamesh is really the only way to go for this kind of, this kind of thing. You, uh, you have to be able to um, clean up the mesh as you go. Um, in this case, the arms are completely gone useless, they're not going to be of any use for this particular Scott, so I just flat out replace them. So at this point I start adding the eyes, or at least in this case add the eyeballs and then start cut it, uh, start detailing the eyelids, um, I now start adding various other parts, so in this case, holding the beard. So um, it's very important for this kind of sculpt, um, instead of trying to actually like sculpt on the original mesh, certainly for things that work better if they're separate, like beards and eyes, eyelids, those kind of things, that you just, uh, you have them as separate pieces. So a lot of my technique for ZBrush is just add parts, block shapes, um, and then just slowly start refining those shapes. So um, in this case, I'm not happy with the way uh, you know the head's looking. So in the end, I uh, just kind of change change the angle, um, start throwing on some texture for the various parts of the hair. And again, I'm not going straight into massive detail. I'm just kind of throwing on general textures just so I know roughly what the volumes are. Later on, uh, Jonathan actually asks for a complete redo of the hair um, for a completely different hairstyle. So uh, you'll see this hair change dramatically throughout the sculpting process. Um, I think it's like the last, the last part of the video where I really go into like detailing depth So you can hear, see here, I'm kind of throwing in um, a photo of Jonathan, just so I've got some rough references uh, while I kind of clean things up. And I think in the end, I decide to I actually add teeth to the model, which is something that uh, notoriously tends to go quite badly wrong. But uh, at the end of this particular sculpt, it actually came out quite well. Um, but yeah, it does take a it does take quite a while before this sculpt. <laughs> Um, starts looking quite nice without looking absolutely horrifying as it does at the moment. So bear with, trust the process, especially if you're doing your own, if you're doing your own model, just trust the process. You'll get something nice at the end if you persevere. If you give up, you're never gonna get it.
So here I throw in uh, just a material color on the eyes. Again, just so I've got a bit more reference to kind of help push that that stylized look that we're going for for this uh, for this sculpt. Okay, so now at this stage we're starting to throw in a little bit of an expression or a little bit of expression work onto the onto the model. Um, <laughs> initially, he looks like he's in a great deal of pain, but uh, eventually we get there. So here I pull in some pre-built arms um, that I just happen to have. Um, in this case, where all the muscles are uh, separate pieces, uh, same with the fingers and the digits. It just makes it a lot easier to pose and work out where everything's going, rather than um, trying, to def uh, trying to fight a deformed mesh as you kind of bend it over. Um, this is my preferred method for sculpting most things. Again, you keep things in parts where you need to, you merge the parts together, move things around, split them back up again, and just makes it a lot easier when it comes to controlling uh, the volumes of something without it kind of collapsing in on itself, like you get when you just use mask and move, or try to move the mesh around. So now that I'm kind of happy with uh, where the arms are, I start merging the parts together and actually start sculpting uh, the various muscle groups um, just to bring everything together, just to start refining and bringing it from just lots of little parts into a much more finished product. Again, uh, this, is, this is another reason why I love the way this arm is set up, because again, with the hands, You've got all the individual digits, and you can just uh, mask each individual digit, making it a lot easier to pose each one each time. Um, Jonathan did ask for um, the arms to be quite, quite big, quite bulky, so uh, I ended up having to inflate and then reposition um, the fingers a little bit, as you can kind of see here. But in the end, it, it worked out quite good in the end, because uh, you know the end result looks really nice. So this is something I've, I've done for this particular sculpt. I've tried to make sure that I use, I still use the original scan data for certain parts. So um, obviously the shoes were completely, completely wrecked, but um, the trousers were good. So I've, I've barely had to touch them. All I've done is um, just reposition where they sit over the shoes um, and then just make minor adjustments, you know, so that when I actually come to Dynamesh, everything's together. So um, with Dynamesh, so long as you make sure that you, both parts of the mesh are uh, well intersecting into each other, when you Dynamesh it, um, it'll definitely stick together. There won't be any gaps, which is very important for um, printability. Um, you have to have one contiguous mesh it has to be watertight. You can't have little bits floating around inside it because um, when you take it into any kind of slicing program, they get upset with voids, or at least voids they haven't created from uh, created by themselves.
So here I start using the damn standard brush just to start cutting in the details for the hair. Um, this is kind of the first pass, as I said before, I end up putting a lot more effort into the hair. I actually add um, a lot of uh, topolo topology that kind of goes over, um, goes over the top of it, just so that it doesn't look quite so uniform, if that makes sense. So here I start using a live booleen to um, cut the holes for the eyes, or at least cut the deta, uh, cut the irises out. Um, it's a technique I've started using quite recently because you get a really sharp edge. Normally what I used to do is um, get the sphere and then just draw in the eyeballs. Um, they always come out slightly wonky, so uh, I, I tend to say now one of the best ways to do it is to use um, booleen just to get that really really sharp cut to the eyeballs. So at this point we start to have a little bit of feedback from Jonathan. Um, we He says he doesn't like the, the kind of bell-bottom jeans so I ended up uh, kind of skinnying them down. Um, and we also, he also wanted like a larger head to make it again to really push the idea that this is a stylized, um, stylized figurine. So this is the bit I mentioned before where I really start pushing uh, the, detailing and the detailing in the hair. So you can see I'm starting to add like little hair curls and flicks out the back of the bun um, and things like that, just to really break up the kind of one do you know one donut and one um, big bowl of hair on on the back of the head kind of thing, just to really push um, to make it look even more detailed so sometimes it helps if you if you throw bits of topology over the top of kind of like the base skull cap you can break it up really nicely and really um, really start detailing the hair even more than um, just by sculpting over So as you can kind of see here, this is almost like the third layer of refinement. I'm just really, you know, really cutting in those individual hair uh, hair parts going over, uh, over and under each other, just to really push to make the hair um, quite, you know, as interesting as possible. But it's almost a bit too realistic for the actual model itself. Um, but it was a nice, you know, it was a nice sculpting challenge. I quite enjoyed it. You know, it gave me it gave me some ideas for some of my own sculpts that I'll end up doing.
And so here we go. This is the finished sculpt. Um, I gotta say, it came out great in the end. Uh, the detailing that I put into the hair really makes the piece stand out. The rest of the design is quite nice too. You know, it's definitely got that um, stylized feel to it. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of this model, I'm sure if you head over to the next layer on YouTube, link in the description, you'll be able to find the model easily. So do let me know down in the comments if you like this kind of video and if you would like a deeper explanation on anything covered. I do have a far more in-depth tutorial on 3D printing in colour for miniatures coming out soon, so subscribe in order not to miss that. Thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good one.